Hi, my name is Monica Morgan, and I chose to talk about Martin Rees's talk, Can We Prevent the End of the World? The end of the world is something that um, is always on the back of my mind, a fear that I have always liked to know more about. Um, the end of the world is a scary realization, and I want to be one step ahead by educating myself on the topic. Now about Mr. Reese. Um, he's a British astrophysicist. Um, he goes by the name Lord Martin Rees, and he is one of the world's most well-known astronomers. He is also a retired professor of cosmology and astrophysics at the University of Cambridge, and he is on the UK's Astronomer Royal. He authored more than 500 research papers talking about cosmological topics ranging from black holes to quantum, quantum physics to the Big Bang. Big Bang Theory. Martin Rees has received numerous awards for his scientific contributions and achievements, like the Templeton Prize. He is said to be one of our key thinkers um, dealing with the future of humanity in the cosmos. He has also issued a clarion call for humanity, demanding that there is a great chance of upcoming crisis on the Earth. In his book, The Final Hour, he lists threats facing the human race that are upcoming in the 21st century, dominated by unique and fast-paced scientific change. He asked that scientists and non-scientists alike take precautions that will ensure our survival um, on Earth as one species. According to Martin Rees, our Earth has existed for 45 million centuries, but the 21st century is special. He says this because um, we are the first generation in humanity um, where we hold the planet's future in our hands. Throughout Earth's history, threats to our planet have come from nature, including disease, earthquakes, asteroids, and so on. But now the worst dangers come from us, humanity. And Mr. Reese is not just talking about nuclear warfare. He claims that our interconnected world um, in, the inter in our interconnected world, if the internet were to shut down, a global catastrophe would arise. Um, because of air travel, um, pandemics can spread worldwide within a couple days. And because of social media, panics and rumors can spread literally at the speed of light. Mr. Reese says that we worry too much about minor hazards that are improbable to happen. Like for instance, um, an airplane crashing um, ingredients in our food that'll give us cancer, low exposure to radiation, and so on. But as a whole, um, we are in denial about these catastrophic events that may happen. Um, according to Reese, the world has not seen the worst yet, and um, it most likely never will. But if an incident um, has the potential to be devastating, it is worth trying to use whatever it takes to prevent it, even if it's likely to fail. Um, it's kind of similar to having insurance, just uh, being safe, um, preparing for the worst. Um, and the science offers great power and promise um, by stating facts that can be proven and using data and technology to accurately find outcomes. Um, but humans are susceptible to thinking that everything is okay and nothing can ever happen to them, um, which is not true. And within decades, millions will have the access to misuse rapidly advancing biotechnology, um, kind of like we uh, misuse cyber technology. Um, according to a man called uh, Freeman Dyson, children in our future will begin to design and create new organisms, just like kids used to play with chemistry sets. I know um, I used to, uh, maybe further generations than they used to. Um, this theory may be on the science fiction side, um, but I don't know. What do you think would happen if by, let's say, 2050, people widespread could master synthetic biology techniques? By that time, other science fiction nightmares might actually become a reality, like robots going crazy, killing us all, or um, the, pro like the possibility that artificial intelligence um, developing will develop a mind of its own and take over the world. Um, we as humans are also a part of this upcoming scenario. For instance, they, there are many eco-extremists who think that if our Earth had a smaller population, we would have less threats, sorry, we would have less threats against humanity in the planet. Can we prevent these risks by regulation? 
I mean, it's worth a try. Um, but there is an issue with regulation um, because uh, there are competitive enterprises that are globalized and they thrive on um, commercial pressure. And uh, that if you aren't allowed to do something that will harm the environment in a certain country, you will operate in a country where the activities are legal. Um, I mean, I'm a business major here at Slippery Rock and um, I know the main priority in business is profits. And um, if an environmental regulation is making you spend more money on costs, you will do whatever it takes to offshore in a country with less strict regulations. It happens all the time. It's happening in our country. Um, the issue with this is that big corporations do not realize what they are actually doing to our environment. Um, as Mr. Reese says in his book, um, we, we will have a challenging time getting through this century. Um, there may be major setbacks to our society. Um, in his opinion, um, there is a 50% chance of a severe setback. But are there likely events um, that could even be worse, events that, can destroy, that could destroy a life? Um, an example of this could be the release of a new um, particle accelerator. Um, when this happened, um, people thought um, about the concept, the concept of this machine in question if it, can, uh, if it could destroy Earth, or even worse, um, destroy the entire universe. Um, well, luckily, Mr. Reese uh, reassures us that him and um, his other colleagues have came to the conclusion that nature has been doing the same exact thing um, in nature, like kind of like cosmetic, uh, ray, cosmic uh, ray collisions. Still, scientists should be sure to take precautions while conducting experience, experiments that generate conditions that would not happen in the natural world. Biologists especially um, should avoid the release of potentially devastating ge genetically modified pathogens because we do not know what they will do to us or our Earth. Um, humans cannot be the end of Earth's story. Um, presently, we have 5 billion years before the sun is supposedly to flare up and um, the universe may go on forever. I mean, we never know. Um, if we do survive um, for generations and generations and to come, um, post-human evolution will come about, um, not just here on Earth, but um, far beyond into the universe. This process could be as timely as the Darwinian theory um, of evolution um, that apparently has led to us humans, but because we now have more advanced technology and more information, future um, evolution will happen much faster because evolution will then be on a technological timescale and not a natural selection timescale. Um, so, so now, Looking at the risks associated with our survival, we cannot let each other ruin this planet in various ways. Some scenarios that have been predicted may sound fiction-like, but others may be without a doubt real. It is important saying that the unfamiliar is not the same as the improbable. Now, because of this saying, Cambridge University is establishing a center to study how to minimize these apop apocalyptic, uh, sorry, apocalyptic risks. Um, it seems like we have come a far way, um, giving students the opportunity to actually think about these potential disasters, but we need all the help we can get from others and everybody as a whole because we are all in this together. Even though we are almost non-existent in our huge universe as it is, we are a planet with 50 million centuries ahead of it. So let's not make life more difficult for upcoming generations to come. So um, I was supposed to, uh, I don't know, make a PowerPoint with three questions. Um, honestly, I am not sure how to do that. So I'm just gonna read them off and I will post them in um, the summary as well. Uh, my first question is, do you feel in the future that biotechnology and other advancements in technologies would actually be scarier or more beneficial to society? And if so, um, do nature and its resources have anything to do with it? Um, the second question I have um, states that um, a particle accelerator was uh, mentioned in this talk as how it could be the destruction of the earth and luckily it ended up not being so because we're still here. Um, are there any technologies today that you feel 
uh, could have the same threat that the accelerator did. Um, and then my last question, of course, is the title of this TED Talk. Do you believe that we could prevent the end of the world? Personally, I think we can. It's going to take a lot of um, a lot of people to do it, and um, we're all, we're all going to have to do this together. But again, um, thank you very much for listening, and um, I hope I get an A.